Happy Tuesday, everybody. Zaps back at you with the latest and greatest in Patreon content from 3XG, baby. Today, we are talking the girl, Miss Toa. Now, as you probably know, Toa Kate, Chaos Bringer, is the one leader in the new anniversary box. And while I wanted to take some time to talk about how viable that leader may or may not be, and what a good list with that leader would look like, um, that that code hasn't been cracked yet. No, I got about three games in with the, with the deck, and I have very mixed feelings about it. Um, but while I had the opportunity to, you know, theorycraft a bit on my list and share all for you, I thought it may be more productive to talk not only about the list, but to to build it, to demonstrate it in front of you, to help illustrate my process. Thinking about the Toa Leader in general, and we'll put a couple notes here to keep track with my thinking. Uh, while I, I don't, when I deck build, I don't actively make these notes, I thought it would be helpful to, to keep some things in the front of our head as we're going through. So looking at the Toa Leader, if you are not familiar with it, Unawakened, you burst three, you get a mirror or food from the top five. Once you hit 10 blacks in your in your warp, draw a card Awaken. So generally speaking, this leader has the capability of Awakening on 3 in a deck that is entirely or mostly mono black. Um, awakened, you can take 3 cards from your warp, put them back in your drop, you give Critical to a Mirror. And then activate Battle, you can choose a card from your hand, drop it, and uh, negate a keyword skill. So that could negate Barrier. A very important ruling. Um, it can stop double strikes, kind of makes your leader an inherent uh, god strike beers of sorts, and it can also stop from some critical damage punching you in the face. I think what is important to note is this is one of the few, if not possibly the only leader in the game, that does not draw when awakened. So definitely at the forefront of what we're thinking about it, we need to keep in mind needs a package to generate drops. Uh, let's shrink that a little bit. So in general, I think the way that most people are looking at this leader right now is kind of basing a skeleton that looks like a Denigra deck and then adding on to it from there, which I don't think is an unreasonable approach, but as we'll talk about, um, there's a couple conflicts with that. But in general, we need we need to take advantage of the strengths of the leader. Otherwise, we'll probably get to a situation where it just becomes an inferior to Meager deck because the Meager being able to overwhelm twice uh, puts him in a league of his own on that front. So the strengths of Toa is in the late game, you are able to take damage with a lot of impunity, not only because it facilitates your overwhelm, because that can overwhelm very, very easily, but it also, being able to use the Gotrek Beer Strike effect to stop double strikes, means it can be hard to finish off the leader. Uh, I, one thing that I, I like about the Toa as well is because of how many cards you see through bursting through, um, the opportunities to draw, um, you know where a lot of your cards are. So being able to do something like power of seeing time into Demigra means you could consistently resolve Demigra on five if you want. Um, also, you can set yourself up for your big mirror plays, which I think is one of the huge strengths of this deck. Uh, supports. Importantly, the discard three aspect of mirror creator absorbed. Now there's a new mirror that, that comes into the deck. Um, and we'll definitely lean on that some too. Um, but again, as far as patching weaknesses, you'll need a package to generate draws. Um, Scientist Fear is probably going to be one of the first things that come to mind, but we want to make sure that a lot of the cards that we're playing are able to replace themselves, or else we're going to just lose the attrition game. The other weakness that we have is we're vulnerable to excessive aggression. So I think about how... If they were to swarm me with like an old school storm deck, this Toa deck could not manage that very well. Um, because the Awaken is not contingent on on your life, it's getting difficult to awaken exactly on time from when you want to. Um, 
I know one of the cool things that we can do, and I don't know if we'll play it or not, but I'll share it while I'm thinking about it, is Vegeta. Da, 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 da. This revived Ravager Vegeta. Uh, when he overwhelms, he actually mills three in the top. So you could go turn one, burst three, leader ability, summon him, that's six. He, gives, he goes to the warp at the end of the turn, that's seven. And on turn two, you could awaken. Um, well, I don't think that's a... That may or may not be the, the main deck play. I definitely think it's worth mentioning that that's a powerful side deck option for when you do need to awaken quickly. But focusing on the strengths, again, uh, supporting Mirror Creator Absorb is probably the most unique aspect of this leader when we think about it compared to Demigra. So that's probably going to be the cornerstone of our deck building. So when we think about how to approach deck building, usually I do it in five ways. One, I find a win condition. After I find a win condition, then we go into um, creating a consistent engine to support that. Then after we create the resource engine, we will find ways to check the weaknesses that the deck has. And we will go from there. So again, finding a win condition, trying to be creative compared to the Migra leader, access to the Migra creator absorber is going to be huge. Um, so let's start there. So let's look at the mirrors. Uh, alrighty. So, Mirror Creator Absorb, definitely going to be a cornerstone of the deck. We've got a full play set in. Um, mirror Self Reformed, this is one of the, the new cards. This allows you, once you have 10 black cards in your warp, which the deck will consistently do, it will allow you for to play it. You get a double strike 20k, and then it can automatically go into the new mirror in active mode. So it's a pretty strong turn. You get 20k double strike, and then you get an infinite attack double strike critical because of the linear ability, and then you discard three. So that's going to be the cornerstone of how we try to close out the game. However, to support the mirror, we're going to have to add in some Toas, so we'll come to that in a minute. Um, and then we look at the other mirrors. This is this card three. This may have a use if we're trying to make sure we overwhelm every single turn. So we'll put maybe one there just as a placeholder of, hey, we might play, we might not play it. Dark Absorber Mirror. This is another option we can play. The benefit here compared to self reformation is reformation pulls the Toa from the deck, or the, the Creator Absorb from the deck, while Dark Absorption Mirror pulls it from the Dropper Warp. Or from the hand or warp, I'm sorry. So the benefit is you can do it more consistently because you, you usually don't have half your deck left by the time you get to turn four. But not only does he cost the same four energy, but it also costs your overwhelm slot. So your turn four, you're not pushing quite as hard. Oh, force destruction mirror on turn five. We could warp a Toa. The opponent warps three black cards. And the Dimension Break Mirror. Oh, I wish this card was so good. This would be if you had 10 cards in your warp, you blow up an energy, and then you blow up a battle card. But both of those are kind of cool, but to be honest, when I compare them to the other 5 drops you could play, uh, mostly the Migra, I just I don't think it's a net worth. So we have Mirrors Mirrors. At that point, we will go to Supporting Our Win Condition. So to play Mirror, we know we need to Overrealm. We know that we need Toas to support Mirror Self-Reformation. And we need some kind of backup plan. In case Mirror just isn't enough to close out the game on its own. Particularly if the attack gets negated, there's not a whole bunch we can do there. So, Toas... 
Alrighty, so we've got a few toes here to pick from. Dark Space Time Unleashed. Look at the top seven for a mirror masked Saiyan. That's going to be helpful because we already play a lot of mirrors. So that'll put us in a good place to start. And then the other Toas. Umber Invitation. This is the one that's still something three or less. That's that's fringe playable. It does stick on the board, which is pretty cool. So if we decide we need more than four Toas, that might be a good place to start. Time Roller Toa. So this one's pretty cool, because it, it doesn't cost any energy. It hits the board, and you steal something two or less. Uh, stealing is really good against the Green Broly matchup. I know that in my experience. Shout out to Peter Katani for taking my one drop turn one, and uh, basically stealing the game after that. It's pretty good. Uh, Dark Rejuvenator Toa. This untaps something in active, or something two or less, puts it in active mode so you can swing again. Usually people are playing that with cards like... Say in Kaba, but I don't think we're going to be able to support something like Saiyan Kaba in the deck, so we'll probably skip there. Smiling Madness, that's a Xeno Evolve. We already know what we want to be doing with 4 energy, so that kind of conflicts there. And number one Invitation, we talked about that already. So we're definitely going to start with 4 Toa Space un Unleashed. And between Umbro Invitation and Time Roller Toa, we could play one or two copies of those just to make sure we always have a Toa. So let's see, let's think about the matchups here. So against Height of Mastery, um, can you sell anything for two energy that you can't steal for three? The only three they play is Path to Greatness, but that gives you a pretty cool play where you could awaken on three, you could use the leader ability to erase barrier, and then you could steal it with Armor Invitation. So that seems really good in that matchup. So I think we'll play a second copy of that, and we'll probably skip on Time Roller Toa. I mean, that, that play seems really powerful in and of itself. Uh, but, I mean, if you think about other matchups against skill list, you can still 30Ks against... What are the decks are good right now? If Oob ends up getting off the ground, the three drops can still test the strength, Goku and Oob. So, yeah, I think that's that's probably a good place to be there. Um, more Overrealm package. So, we think about what other Overrealms we can play. How many do we have so far? Uh, two... Three, four. Yeah, we don't have much yet. So from there, we would go and we would search by overrealm. Let's move this out of the way. Um, overrealm. So cards we can support. So Banisher, Scientist, Vu hits there. Um, Beyond Darkness, Demigra. That could be a sick finisher. I said Mass Saint Mysterious Warrior could be useful. We talked about how Ravid, Revived Ravager Vachita could be great in the side deck to help awaken. Um, Fu Shroud and Mystery. I don't think this deck is getting to six cards to turn six. Um, there's a world where we could go into Demigra stuff, but I think that's going to be hard to find the space for. So I'm going to hold my breath there for now. Uh, Bar fully unleashed, that could be in the side. Um, talked about Scientist Fu. Supreme Kai Time Time's Choice. I like this. This would be a, a good way to tutor the pieces to make sure you always have your mirror on time. And then in that case, I'm thinking about if we want to support... Ravager, what's the the Vegeta's name? The black one. Um, time Regulator. So this is this is a complex card in the stack. So on one front, so when you play a card on card using Overrealm, choose up two black cards with an energy cost of seven or less from your war, put them in the bottom of your deck, and if you do, you draw a card. So on one side, it's really good because it takes your mirror creator absorbs that you mill and puts them back in the deck to make sure you can resolve the four drop. On the other side, playing resolving this effect multiple times takes away from your leader's ability to awaken. So either we need to be very intentional about playing around and playing into Time Regulator, or we need to find a second way to facilitate that process facilitate that so we are keeping our, our drop big enough. I think I think this is an issue that's 
minor enough that we can play around, but we'll definitely want to side this revived Ravager Vegeta. So for the times that we do play Time Regulator, we can do that and not feel like our deck is counterintuitive. So let's see if we can get these moved to the side deck. Boom, boom, boom. There's three, baby. And then we got Vegeta Time Regulator. That's going to be a four of. So coming back to our notes. So we got the OR. We got the toes that we need. Uh, what is our backup plan? So if... Why would... Why would this win condition not work? Let's see. If they have a lot of cards... Um, the, the hand discard is, is negligible. And while it's awesome that Mirror Creator Absorbed is consistent in the deck and can do a lot of damage, we aren't able to necessarily pull out game unless we can stop the negates or play mirrors every single turn to ensure we're, we're doing damage. And that's probably the, the more... Focusing on other ways to complement Mirror probably makes the most sense, because you can always cast Mirror for, for one from your hand, and, you know, it's a guaranteed damage unless they don't have a negate. So maybe we go that route. So we can do Bad Ring Laser to support Mira. We could do Furthering Destruction Champa. Those would probably be the two routes that I would go. Bad Ring is hard because you can't commit too much into yellow, and you need at least, you know, access to three yellows over the course of the game. The Bad Ring Laser, the yellow you tap, and the yellow you discard. So I think we're just going to lean heavier into Furthering Destruction Champa, uh, Wudu Kai. Um, let's see here. There it is. We'll probably play two, because we, we only want to see, we don't need to see it till the end of the game, and we don't want to burst it necessarily early. So two makes sense to me. And from there, I think we're good. So we started creating a resource engine. Uh, we're abusing Overrealm for draws, uh, Vegeta Regulator, Cycle. I guess for a resource, we're looking more of a consistency engine. Because I, I think we can do this regularly, it's just a matter of making sure that the way we burst, the way we mill, doesn't necessarily contradict where we're going from. So from there, oh, for draws, um, we probably want super combos, so we can draw as much as we can, and then probably... At that point, I need to start thinking about, so what are we doing with our turns, right? So, we know turn 4, we want to play Mira. And the goal by then is to get as much damage in as possible. So, the early game wants to be ideally aggressive one-drops that deal damage. Alternatively, we could have one-drops that draw. Um, and that's pretty much what we're going to do. One, turn one. On turn two is probably <coughs> either swinging with a mirror or swinging with an OR and playing regulator. So if we're playing regulator on two, yeah, regulator is always going to be the goal for two. So then in that case, plus we need zero cost over realms to support that. And then on turn three... Ideally, probably be the second regulator plus OR, or we could do one drop plus FDC. And then on four is resolving Toa. Ideally, awakening on either turn three or turn four. So let's start there. Okay, so we still haven't got super combos in. So that's definitely going to be Supreme Kai time. Supreme Kai of Time. World Protector. Oh, Supreme Kai Time, Time Disruptor. That could be a good way to make sure we don't die in the early game. That may be worth considering. I like how it complements some of your matchups. It also balances if you do have to awaken early. Um, 
other one drops. So let's look at what one drops black has. Don't necessarily care about what kind of card it is. Um, let's see. Kami probably makes it in here. So we could do the the engine with Toki Toki. One of the cool things about Toki Toki is when you use the time regulator's ability to take your super combos and put them on the bottom of the deck, if you play Toki Toki, it would shuffle and give you the opportunity to draw it again. That's kind of cool. So we'll throw that in there. Maybe. All right. So then you want some Dark Power Black Mass Saiyans. Um, I don't think this one you can search off Toa Leader, which is unfortunate. But that gives us access to Awakening cards, which is a big deal. And allows us to attack aggressively. Because the goal, if we get them down to 3 health on turn 4, we can play the Mirror, the Mirror swings 20k, and then you swing 20k infinite, you get them down to 2. And then either like you awaken and play... FTC, or you get them three to one, and then uh, hard cast a second mirror. That could be cool. So we talked about how Toa's Sunder Point, No Escape Sun Goku. This has a lot of value with the UI deck coming out, being able to stop or being able to not bounce a card to stop uh, Path to Infinity could be useful. Alrighty. So how many of these cards made it? In? Didn't look like they all did. Let's try this one more time. Um, this is strange. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Two Adende. Toki Toki. Okay. Sorry guys, just having a little bit of a glitch here with... What the heck? That's, we're gonna have to drop out here for a second, seems like... We're glitching out a little bit here. It's cause the deck is too sick! Alright, so black one drops. Let's go. Boom. Akami. Akronoa. We'll try maybe two Supreme Kai's. Uh three, because we we'd won it in the early game. Four Max Saiyans. Actually, do we want Supreme Kai? Cause they we kinda want our life being attacked at the early turns. So actually I think I'm okay skipping on it. Um Supreme Kai, which one is this? Time Disruptor. Yeah, we're going to cut all three copies of those. I don't think we need it right now. We can revisit that later if need be. Uh, we got four of those. Um, three Toki Toki. And for three targets, we probably want six or seven one drops. That sounds about right. No escape on Goku, we talked about how good that'll be. Um, do we put a Dende in? Let's put a Dende in just in case. So let's see where we're at here. So we got one. One, one drop. Two drop. Three. Four. So we'll need part two more. So we'll do a second Kami. And we'll do a second Cronoa. That seems good. And then, did the super combo get in here? It did not. Okay, so let's fix that. There it is. 
Alrighty. So that about gives us a deck. So let's see where we're at. Alright. So version 1.0. Looking something like this. So... <laughs> a couple of these are placeholders, right? Dimension Banisher, Fu, Masked Saiyan, Bardic Fully Unleashed. Not sure for which route we're going to go that route. Um, so ideally, you want aggressive one drops that do damage. So if you go second, you want to play a one drop. You have Black Masked Saiyan. You have, yeah, you have a ton. You have like 13. That's going to be good because that's the main thing you want to do. Then on two, you play Vegeta. And then you want to play a zero cost overrealm. How many zero cost overrealms do we have right now? This doesn't really count. We got four. We have five. So we're gonna need more than that. So we'll we'll bump relentless destruction Mira up to four. Um, so let's start by cutting some of these over realms, and then that puts us at four. Let's look at this again. Alright, so turn one. You have a ton of one drops. Toki Toki, any of the one drops that plus something, or Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan. Turn two, you play Vegeta Time Regulator. You use the leader ability. Oh, so that's something we need to do. Enough Mira and Mass Saiyan. So let's, let's, let's double check this. Yeah, so that's Mast Saiyan. And this is Black Mast Saiyan. So yeah, you can't search the one drop off Toa, which is unfortunate for our ratios, but we'll still get there. Anyway, so turn two. Vegeta Time Regulator, and then you play an Overwhelm, either Time's Choice or Relentless Destruction Mirror. Makes sense to me. Turn three, assuming you don't awaken. So let's see, if you played another Vegeta Time Regulator... Turn one, you burst three. Turn two, you burst, you go up to six. You put two back, so you're at four. The overall warps at the end of the turn, that's five. Turn three, you burst another three, and you go to eight. And then if you overwhelmed at that point, you would need to have used two cards over the course of that turn. Which is annoying, but not impossible. But if you're at a point where you need to awaken on three, you should be in a place to do that. Because um, like you have to only have to combo like two cards. So if there was like a discard outlet, that would be cool. Um, discard. Ooh, okay. So, discard outlet. We could play the new Bardock. The new Overrun Bardock. That could have a place here. What's the name of that thing? Um. Bardock Black. Why is every Bardock so good? Yeah, so Bardock, Awakened Instincts. Draw two, discard one, and that could be another Overrun after that. So that could be a good... Should that be primary over Supreme Kai of Time? Um, probably? Well, they both plus the same. But this gives another pressure through being 20k. That's a hard one to tell. I think, I think they both have a place in the deck. Let's look at this again. We're close. That seems that seems pretty good. The ratios need worked out a little bit, but I, I like a lot of where the list is. I think I'd like more scientist foo again to make sure that we're drawing more. Plus, it's an extra target for the leader ability. Um, so how many mirrors do we have? Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So let's see. So if we have fourteen. 
what's the math on that? So if we have a pop, 50 cards in deck, um, we said 14, right? 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, again. Okay. So the way the hypergeometric calculator works, 50 cards in your deck, 14 targets, and a sample size of 5 because we're looking at the top one. What is the chance of hitting one off the leader ability? 82 is decent. Uh, 85 tends to be the benchmark that I shoot for turn one. So 84.6, 16 would be 86. And that'd probably be pretty good because if we got to a point where we needed to, let's say we're using a turn three, uh, we pulled three cards from our deck, 16, 13. That's so 81. So yeah, so we need to hit... I want 16 targets in here. So 4... 4... Oh, wait. 4... 8. Because Creator Absorb counts too. 4, 8, 9. 10, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, we'll, we'll need two more. So what we can do there... Is... Um... <laughs> Scientist food can be two. I don't think we want three though. And then are there any other mass sands we can play that are better than the ones we're talking about? I don't think there is. This black sand would be removal. Time trauma is a way to help us pick up life from our hand if it's small. That's also removal. Ooh, that's tempting. Um, turn three if we awaken pick up two life, one or two, then we warp something. That seems pretty good. That seems really good. Okay, so two copies of that. Did it register? It didn't. Probably need to cut some cards from the deck first. So, let's see where we're at. Oh, it did register, but it was the wrong one. My goodness, guys. I'M THE WORST! So minus Big World Warrior. Plus two. Do we got Time Trauma? We don't. Oh, we do. Okay. So let's try this, and that should hopefully be just about everything we need. So, four, eight, nine... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And we decided we needed... Was it 18 or was it 16? Yeah, it was only 16, so we can cut two of them. Um, <laughs> okay, so we can cut two more, and then we need to find two more spots. And that'll be fine. Scientist Foo is a two of... I don't think we're going to resolve all the copies of this. We'll go 3 and 3 for testing version 1.0, because honestly, I don't know which one is better. Uh, that one extra card might make all the difference. Okay, 55. We'll cut down to 2 trauma. Uh, dimension Manager Food, we're going to pass on that just based on where we're at life-wise. Um, 53, and then we just need to cut from there. At the end of the day, what's more important, draw or being able to do aggressive damage? Oh, Dark Power Black Messiah, the card just seems really important. Um, let's check some weaknesses. What are we weak to? We're weak to super aggression. We are weak to, luckily we're not weak to Tau, because Mirror warps them and doesn't send them to the drop. Um, da -da -da, no, no. 53, we need to cut three spots. What three cards are least useful against aggression? Um, we want the 20k against aggression. We're also comboing extra. Um, 
Hmm. This is hard. Now we're at four, six. Ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, so we can cut one more there. That's good. Um, we can probably cut a mirror. I don't think the mirror is very. I don't think the mirror is great. We're pretty much just playing it as a target. Real unsubstructed really mirror. So that goes down to two. And then last two slots. Um, oh, consistency, consistency. Maybe just Toki Toki goes down to two, and maybe just the fifth Toa? We might mill, mill enough. Let's see. So over the course of four turns, we mill three, six, nine, twelve. Let's do stat here. All right. So we got fifty cards in deck, right? If we we see six cards, and we burst twelve, so that's eighteen. And if we pick up four life, so you're about 20 to 22 cards. So in the chance of 22 cards, um, if we play six Toas, what are the chances we see one Toa by then? 97. Okay, so we don't need six. How's, how's five? Five is 95. Yeah. Four is probably still above 92. Four, five. Yeah, we can cut a Toa. All right, we got a plan. Toa, 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 Toa. Cool. Perfect. All right. So now we got a main. We got a side. So again, figuring out ways for super aggression. Um, other ways that matchup which could be height of mastery, just generically scary. And then coming up with a plan for mill because we mill a lot. Um, so we'll be able to awaken early, but that doesn't necessarily help us. Um, I do really like this plan for the height of mastery. Coming back to Umbral. And just trying to resolve that a lot. That also is a great side card against Green Broly, uh, which we should probably be prepared for. And we can do that through the other Bardock, fully unleashed. Against Aggro, those become Masked Saiyans, Mysterious Warrior. Uh, we have all the black side deck cards in the main, which is pretty cool already. Um, I don't think we need to side additional copies of any of those. But. So re revive to help us awaken fast. Umbral for Green Broly, Bark fully unleashed, and Mass Saiyan against Green Broly and Kid Q respectively. And then we have nine cards. What else helps us against aggression? Mm, negates. We should side negates. Power burst. Nice twelve. And then the last three slots. Um, what can we do against Mill to put us in a happy place? So Vegeta, the Vegeta actually cycles like cycles the Mill cards because you get Mill and then you play Vegeta and that can put the two drop and that can cycle the stuff back. So you might be okay on that front. You just focus on a hand destruction strategy. Yeah, that seems that seems pretty good. I think Mail might be a decent matchup. Um, Green Broly, Yellow Broly, Chain Attacks. I know you already play four Black Mass Saiyans, so you have a sick matchup there. Um, is there anything else we can do against the Height of Mastery? My gut is telling me probably not. Um, oh. I guess we have a bit of endurance against Hide of Mastery because we can stop it from having triple attack. But Victory Strike would be unfortunate, and I don't think there's a solution to them seeing Victory Strike. I guess Pressure Ball or something like that, but we probably don't want that. Um, I don't know. Last couple cards. What other matchups are there? Um, Super Aggression, Hide of Mastery, Mill. Maybe just additional copies of cards we're already playing. And that could be fine for version 1.0. So we go back mass saying to 3. Um, Bar fully unleashed. That can be through shrouded. Hmm. Nah. We don't need that. We'll do the fourth power burst. And we'll do a 
fourth revived Ravager gives me two weight metal. I'm sure the side deck has a lot of room for improvement, but that is where we are at. That is version 1.0 main deck for Toa Leader. And then the version 1.0 side deck of uh, four Revived Ravager Vegeta, two Umbral Invitation Toa, two Bart Fully Unleashed, three Massane, and four Power Burst. So hopefully watching how that process went was insightful for you. I know this was a little long, and I know it was a little convoluted at moments. But deck building is just as much an art as a science, and a lot of it just comes down to this kind of building an intuition from building a lot, as many of you probably know. So what do you guys think of the list? Where do you think version 2.0 should go from here? Uh, what can we do to make this list sicker? Have you tested the leader yet? How are your testing going? You let me know, and we will see what happens from here. Thank you. Scrub fam is best fam. Holla.